Hi, podcast. See you, podcast time for uh, Tuesday, April 23rd. A few weeks from past birthday, 2019. Get those gift ideas ready. I, I got my Amazon wish list. No, I don't. That's Ian Ferguson. Hi. I'm Pat Conchie. What are we talking about? We're talking about Ninja being one of the most influential people of all time, apparently. Yes. The 30th anniversary of the Game Boy. Uh, Extraterrestrials, rare Atari game on eBay. Prototype updates. More prototypes found for the Super Nintendo. Yay! A preservationist update. In China, game ban, a Tales from the Game Store, and a Patreon uh, poll topic. Ian, what's been going on with you? You, you, you downloaded some Mortal Kombat? Yeah. Mortal Kombat? Yeah, so I, I actually didn't realize. I woke up yesterday and I was like, man, Mortal Kombat comes out soon. And I was like, wait a second, what's today? I think it comes out tomorrow. <laughs> so <laughs> Midnight. Um, over here on the uh, West Coast, it's nice because uh, games unlock, uh, digital download games unlock at 9. So they don't code them to time codes. They just, but, or, or, yeah, it's, it's basically it's you know once it's once it's midnight on the East Coast, it's it's available everywhere. Um, so God bless that being on the West Coast for I mean for football games are earlier. Yeah, things just end earlier. The fucking Oscars don't go till midnight. It's great. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, you're not up until one in the morning watching WrestleMania. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> but, I can't imagine that. Anyway. Um, so yeah, back to it. Vani was like, oh, that sounds like it'd be a fun thing to do tonight. And I was like, yeah, why not? Because I really enjoyed Mortal Kombat 10. Um, I never liked the series growing up. I had fun enough with 2. But um, when I got Mortal Kombat 9, it was it was a step in the right direction. And was, then, what was, how, when did 9 come out? Like six, seven years ago? 9 was like 360 PS3. So yeah, it was probably 2010 like... 2010-ish? 9? I'd say like 2009 probably. Okay, so, like t- okay. so 1 comes out every five years about. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then years. Mortal Kombat, I think it was like four years since Mortal Kombat 10. So then Mortal Kombat 10 improved a lot on it, and I played that a ton. So at this point, 11 seemed like it was going to be a solid buy. Um, and so, you're a big fan of the series. I know I slag it off unnecessarily at some point, but, you know, it's a quality series. I just, it's, it's not for me. I like the modern series. Um, I mean, the fighting's a lot better. The story... So, basically, Vani and I played for about three hours last night, two hours last night. Uh, we streamed it. Uh, we each made sure to play each character at least once. We did all the backgrounds. Um, Vani is afraid to fail at pulling off a fatality, so if she She's wins... She's afraid? If, to fail. So, if she wins, she just slaps me in the face and my guy falls over. And oh, she, she'd rather... Versus you just falling over. Yeah, yeah. It, so, she... Um, but she is actually very good she's finding some of her characters um but it looks like the main game itself is this, this is one thing i really appreciate about nether realm um you get a lot of games and i like these games don't get me wrong like i like tekken 7 a lot and i like street fighter 5 well sort of but a lot of these games are released these days and the focus is solely on versus mode they're very lacking in terms of um there's 25 characters, by the way. Two DLC, 23 on launch, looks like. Yeah. Okay. And they're going to... they'll Just like uh, Injustice in Mortal Kombat 10, they'll probably do two packs of four DLC characters. Um, so what was I saying? Oh, so uh, most fighting games focus on the versus aspect now. Like, one-on-one. You know, like when Street Fighter released, it had no arcade mode, no story mode. Uh, it was... They were talking about the, how ridiculous it was when yeah. it released. Yeah. And... I play most of my fighting games against people, but it, it's nice to have something. Nether Realm games go over the top. There's like a three hour story mode that is basically watching cinematics, and then it goes into f- cutscenes. They shoehorn in fights somehow, and, and you and you fight in there. <laughs> I, I watched some of the cutscenes from past Mortal Kombat games. They're ridiculous, but I guess they're entertaining. They're so they cheesy. are. I mean, they're, they're definitely they're fucking, dumb. Yeah, they're over the top. And at some point, how many times can you like make up a different story for a tournament fighter? Well, you know, hold like, on. Let's let's, I, let's talk about how this one starts. Okay, let's talk about. <laughs> First of all, which one was there an official like which one rebooted the story? Was that nine or ten? Did one like say <laughs> this is like the official reboot? I, I think I don't know story. Or much. is it the same story they just retell over and over? Well, again? this one looks like because every because no character apparently stays dead. They come back. Yeah. So, so I can't remember how ten ended. And led into this, but <laughs> but I, it does seem to be somewhat of a continuation because it starts with uh, Shinnok and Chains, and Raiden has gone very dark and gritty, 
and uh, Grim Dark Raiden. Yeah, Grim Dark. Oh, Raiden. I saw this when the cheeser when he when he like just destroys him, right? Yeah, he, he destroys like uh, Shinnok, and uh, he cuts his head off. Uh-huh. But Shinnok can't die, so and <laughs> there's this head just sitting there, and it's like talking but not making <laughs> any any sense. And then it, it, you know you can't hear it, and then um, like as it goes on. I'm only like maybe 45 minutes in it. I can't remember exactly why, but now the head is like trapped in the middle of a medallion and people are fighting for power. I don't, I have no it's, idea. The story is ridiculous. They're, they're, I just think it's funny that in a game that's all about killing and violence that the characters don't actually die. Well, the roster is 90% the same. So then I don't understand like how, I guess you got to bring, you can't kill off these characters. I'm not saying you got to kill off half of them, but like a few actually die in the story don't come back. I'm guessing maybe they have in the past, but not the main ones. Liu Kang, Raiden, Sonya, Sub-Zero, Scorpion, Baraka. Liu Kang's uh, just evil. Johnny Cage isn't here. He died in the, at the beginning of the second movie. He, he's still here. And the movies don't count. <laughs> I'm just saying, though, like, none of the deaths are actually built into the story. That they, Luke... No, the game is an over-the-top schlock fest. They, and that's another thing I've enjoyed about it. They've stopped trying to have it make sense. They don't try to make sense anymore. And they just have fun with it. And like I said, they've improved the fighting. So beyond the story well, mode, so how's this fighting improved? Uh, so in this one, um, it so I'm not a fighting game expert. So if I'm wrong about Absolutely certain not. things, um, <laughs> it just feels better. The combos are better. Differences that I've noticed between um, some main differences I've noticed between uh, uh, ten and eleven so far. Um, moves feel a bit more balanced. Uppercuts aren't as easy to spam. Uh, the reach on the uppercut feels like it's been shortened a little bit. It's not this ridiculous. way, so they have to be closer. That that was something that I, I don't know if that's true, but that's certainly how it felt last night. Okay. Um, also, the way they uh, they changed their meter moves uh, seems to be a bit better. Okay. Um, the power meter stuff. Uh, the fatal blow, which used to be called the X ray, is now. Um, built up in a different way so it doesn't use your bar one of the problems in mortal kombat 10 um and 9 in my opinion was you had this bar that would fill up that would let you do like um extra special versions of special moves or counters and stuff like that but when the bar was full that's when you would do your x-ray move you know your big like comeback move okay so what it did was is it, it kind of no one ever used the other enhancements that were there in 9 and 10. They A lot of people didn't bother to use things like super move bursts and stuff like that because they were saving up for this this x-ray, this, this big move. So now it's separate from the other, so you can now play around with those other mechanics You don't want to get too fancy with your like meter moves in fighting games. I think we, we, I don't like having too many options. This is this one is, is, is perfect. Give me like two. So Give me the, like one meter... I can use it up when it's like half or like full. Like, do we really need that many options with it? So, it's, no, you don't. But that's why I think this works. It, it, it's one option now that's always there. Every fighting game now has some sort of comeback mid match move. Sure. And then you get like one per, once per entire yeah. match. The and then at the through. bottom, a lot of the, so far, because I haven't looked hugely into it. Like I said, I played like three hours, but um, you can use it to enhance moves. So, like, if you do a down toward square. And then if you do down towards square and R1 at the same time, it charges it up and it does extra hits and okay. things like that, which is fun. Um, so, yeah, I mean. You uh, like it? Yeah, it, it feels good. Smoother than, than 10? It, it, honestly, it's, 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 it, 10 was very close to very, very, very good. Is this a little felt a little off? Yeah, this is, I think, closer so far. Now, I've heard bad things about the grind. I've heard bad things about microtransactions. Already? But apparently, um, Never, I don't know, NetherRealm came out and said, we're going to rebalance the the um, the unlocks, essentially. so that it, Too hard to get some? Yeah. How do you know that when a game just came out 10 hours ago, people playing in the mid-hours of the, of the morning to well, yeah. and unlock I mean, stuff? You can do matches and look at what's available to unlock in the crypt, and that's another thing that's fun about the crypt. The Mortal Kombat 9 through 11 games. Can I make a comment on the roster real quick? And yeah. I, I honestly didn't know that there was someone called Cassie Cage. I looked this up. I thought it was like Johnny Cage's sister. So, then his, I looked it up. It's the daughter with Sonya. Yeah. But they're still both in the game. And Cassie Cage looks as old as Sonya does. So, what's going on with like this time time split differential where 
Johnny Cage should be 60 years old if Cassie's like 30 or 25. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Cassie's supposed to they be They should be like, retired. Sonya and Johnny Cage should be retired somewhere. I think she's supposed right. to be like right around 20. But she's like a police person, it looks like. You she, can't be a 20-year-old police she's woman. A special forces agent. Yeah, she, so that takes like 35 years to get to that. Be a special forces person or 30 years. Know. Not in the world of Mortal Kombat. I mean, she looks she looks great. I mean, she looks like her mom and her dad, I guess. But when did they have time to have sex? I thought they didn't like each other. Is, is that part of... Uh, they, they, I, I think they started boning down around nine is that, part, is that part of the lore is they have a little sneaky sex somewhere <laughs> but uh where they survive a, a, they survive the scorpion fight so in, they in 10 they were divorced and then they got back together at the end of 10. are you serious yes i, I yeah they there's were, enough time to do these tournaments and then get divorced and come back and have a kid that ages they started 30 off years divorced in in 10 and I so think in that, nine they had the sex i don't know so in 10 <laughs> I can't remember all the way back to nine. What was the conception? That's in what I ten, know. which was the first one that introduced Cassie Cage, um, and Jacqueline Briggs, which is Jax's daughter. So they all have their kids in this? That was in. Oh yeah, and here's the fun part. Here's like, the fun part: mom versus dad, and then you pull a fatality like on your daughter we, or something. Can shit. we leave the kids out of this? <laughs> just... You want to make a better life. You don't want to drag your kids into Mortal Kombat tournaments. You want to provide, you want a better life for your kids. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. That's if I ever have a kid, you ever a kid, you don't want the kid to go through this podcast. You want the kid to do a little better. Right. You know, I don't have the kid fight for their lives and be, you know, have their heads cut off every three minutes. Every three I, minutes. I just thought it was strange. I was like, that's bizarre to me where you bring your family siblings and into a, a Mortal Kombat game. It's just weird to even be put in that position, isn't it? Or maybe maybe some uh, female players want to be able to kill their father in the game. That's fine. Get, get out some steam. That's fine. Then let's, then, you know, then let's have the son kill the mom. Why not? Oh, my God. <laughs> let's, let's keep an equal opportunity here. That's all I'm saying. All right. So that's all for Mortal Kombat. Yeah, it's, real it's real quick on the Switch version, uh, some early whatever controversy, because apparently the, the Switch download is 20 gigs. So if you actually buy the physical version on the card, you get like you get the bare bones experience, supposedly with like uh, no story or anything. It's just like you can fight one so on if one. So if it. you... If you plugged it in, if, if you put that cartridge in, you so turned you, it on without it being connected to the internet, and you played it before update, you, you would get nothing. You get like like what we, we got like the Street Fighter game where it's like one on one <laughs> fights with no one. Shit. So that's a problem now because with 20 gigs, and I heard that there could be another update coming out, which adds even more already. Now this really comes into the the, the point of. What's the point? What's the point of even having the physical one? But the but the f problem is the Switch doesn't have any enough enough on there where one game will, will could could be most of your your gigabytes, your sixty four gigabytes. Yeah. So you got to buy the cards. I mean, I bought a two hundred fifty six gig card. I think on Prime Day last year that was highly recommended. But even that two hundred fifty six gigs, you might have to swap that out. Yeah. After a year or two of having games on the Switch, so so either put the games on cards that hold most of it. I'm not saying they gotta be 120 gig cards, but you can. Can you do a 16 gig card and get most of that shit on there, or a 24 gig, or a 32? Right. I don't understand what the reasoning is. I do. I don't. I, I mean, from what I understand, those size cards exist for the Switch, but it's cheaper to use the other ones. They're just passing the pain off to the consumer. Yeah, basically. You know. um, so it's cheaper. You don't want to get in a situation where you have to like have your Switch and like, oh, what, what. What uh, I gotta swap the card out to play the game now. On top of having the game in, that's just that's just gonna be a weird spot. My um, it, it, not this sounds more dramatic than it is, but this this is how physical media will end up slipping away. It's not gonna just sure. disappear. They're gonna do this, and people are gonna realize there's no point in having this physical media if 20 years from now I can't plug this in and basically get the game. Yeah, they're forcing it to be crap. Once a physical purchase essentially just becomes a download with a box which we've already seen and discussed on here that's i think when people are going to realize well then i'm not going to the store i'm going to sit in my living room and hit download sure the other thing is i've seen people on twitter uh comparing there's compl complaining that the switch version looks like a ps3 error they're doing matching screenshots that's versus that's fine i think people would be happy if they had it even even though the, you know ps3 uh, is like 12 years old i think people would be happy saying i have a handheld version of that that's that's my take. Yes, you know. the Switch is a dockable console. It's a, it's a home console, but it's also a portable. And I, I'm playing Mortal Kombat on the PS4. That's where I play my fighting games. Um, but um, 
<sighs> oh, right. Um, I mean, <laughs> it was just a generation ago. We were hoping for even a remotely decent version of various fighting games on, mm -hmm. like, the 3DS or the Vita or the PSP. Yeah. Um, Mortal Kombat 10 on the Vita was not fantastic either in terms of its graphic quality. But you know what? It was Mortal Kombat 10 on the go. Um, Mortal Kombat 11... I, I, people... As long as it plays the same, I know people are complaining that you know, some fatalities are, are making it jittery and stuff. They can probably fix some of that. But if it plays the same, to me, it's like having a computer game where you just take the textures down to like low to, in order to be smoother. Right. I'd rather have an arcade port that is pretty much 100% accurate, but less graphical, yeah, uh, less uh, faithful in the graphics department than than one that looks pretty and doesn't have any or a total report where it's like a, a different game and that's what we always used to get yeah and that's not what we have here so yeah i mean people are complaining about what they should have known all the time all, all along which is the switch is not as powerful as a ps4 and an xbox one and it does what it can and it's on you know and it's also portable it's a little console that could little handheld yeah. that could um and then real quick Back in the news, and back in August, we talked about Philip Mewson, who was unceremoniously dumped from IGN for plagiarizing uh, on, I think, five or six videos and articles for game reviews. And he came back with an apology uh, eight months later. And he's been, still been doing videos on YouTube now, now and then. They all get thumbed down to hell. Right. Because once you are a plagiarist, that's that's like a cheater. Yeah. You're kind of low. You kind of Your trust is misplaced at that point. So... Um, I don't know. I don't, my thoughts are just, he put out, first of all, he put out an apology video. Then the same day, hours later, he put out a response to the apology. It looked like an, I didn't watch that one, but that one looked like it was like an in-depth explanation as to why I'm apologizing. It wasn't in-depth. It was a few extra minutes. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so the, the question is, I, I guess once you're outed in the public and you're embarrassed and you're thrown away from your job, you, you want to apologize, but you do that right away. You don't wait eight months later. Cause by now most people forgot who you are. Right. You're not going to get your job back anywhere. And to me, it's it just, it's just sort of, um, I don't know. I don't, uh, you can do whatever you want, but I mean, as far as I'm concerned, uh, once you're like this in the community, outed as a plagiarist, you're sort of persona non grata, and I wish you luck in, in your future endeavors, but just do something else. That's, that's my opinion. Just go do something else. That's kind of my thinking on it, too. Um, his apology, as weirdly timed and as late as it is, without talking about him for a second, his apology is a template for a good apology. Sure, this but... This video. He covered... I mean, he did not... He he took all the blame this time. Um, it was it was funny. He laid out all the... He ones. laid out every right, single... So I did. Like, his interactions. Like, like, what was it? Like, Bayonetta and FIFA and a couple yeah. others. I was like, oh, okay. It's actually funny when he's listing them all. But, you know, he, he addresses each one and doesn't try to shift blame around this time. Uh, acknowledges, you know, how the other people might have felt. It was a good apology in... Theory. In theory. But he doubled down back in August and like yeah. went after Kotaku for spotlighting it, saying like, oh, they're doing this for clicks. It's like, no, we're reporting major news. This doesn't happen often where a, a major website has to, you know, it, like if it happens with like a New York Times, it's huge news. If, if, if a reporter gets taken down for plagiarism, which happened, I think like 10 years ago, someone was disgraced, a journalist with, I think it was New York Times. So it's, it's big news. It doesn't happen. Plus it's, it's like un, unthinkable for a lot of people that you would do that. You'd be that dishonest. Right. So, I mean, that that's all. I mean, his, his YouTube career is going to be where it is. It's not going to really, people are going to have like that weird, weird sort of morbid curiosity, I believe, but I don't think it's going to go places now it's just it's tough to gain trust back on stuff like that he bl he blamed it on like oh my, you know I, I got to know over my head with this job you know things like that well then don't do the job i mean that's one thing you can say you know don't don't rip people off say you need help i know it's tough being a journalist at ig and you probably weren't weren't paid that much in an entry-level position and you want to crank it out you want to do good but you know it's 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 not for everyone that's that's for sure all right kind of like tripe like what tripe Tripe? It's I don't. Not, it's not for everyone. Do we, do we have that Korean barbecue? Do we ever get the tripe? I I eat tripe, but I don't. Uh, yeah, no, I got intestine once. I didn't get tripe. Isn't tripe intestine? Well, yes. It's just it depends on what way it is. It's gonna be honeycomb or. Okay, honeycomb intestine. All right. 